Welcome to the Get Trauma Informed podcast, dedicated to unraveling the complexities of trauma, its pervasive impact, and the journey towards holistic recovery and realignment. If your radiance has ever felt muted, like I and thousands of others, you're in the right place to reignite your inner light. I'm your host, wellness coach Liz Blanding, and this is the Get Trauma Informed podcast. Welcome to another wonderful, amazing episode with our fantastic guest. We have Catherine Danatya here with us today. How are you today? I'm great. How are you doing? I am doing wonderful. I am so excited to have you here today and to talk about the amazing, wonderful work that you're doing. Um, So Catherine is the co-founder, president, and CEO of Growing Good, Inc. And I just love that. When I first heard the name of your organization, I just, I fell in love with it. And then your message, you know, about growing good in the community and the great work that you're doing. So we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, but before we get started, one of the one of the leading questions that we start with is, what does Get Trauma Informed mean to you? Well, I think for me, it's about understanding how past traumas really affect not just you moving in the present, but you in the future, as well as how it affects generationally, right? Like our traumas from our experiences as we grow up, as we experience life, they really shape a large part of who we are and how we see the world and how we move in the world. And so getting trauma-informed, the importance of that is how do we understand those experiences and how they impact how we see the world, how we move through the world, how we think, how we navigate, but then also not having it be a barrier, right? But actually a strength to learn how to utilize that experience to be better, to help others be better, and then to also not continue cycles of trauma and abuse so that we don't actually perpetuate or perpetrate that on other people or on the people in our lives, like our children and our grandchildren. So it's, it's, you can't do that without doing the work on yourself, right? If you, and let's face it, we all have generational trauma that comes from past hurts or past injustices and abuses that have been passed down to us, but really being able to break that cycle so that moving forward, everything becomes better, right? So that it's not continuing that cycle, but also for your own sake, to be able to have the clarity and the sanity and the peace of mind to continue your life and not forget what happened, but actually learn from it, incorporate it and have it be a strength. For you. Absolutely. And you summed that up so well when you express the 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 coming into the awareness of it. So oftentimes we're walking through and we don't understand how trauma has actually impacted our deci- or how it impacts our decisions moving forward and definitely generationally, how it infect, how it well, I, I said infect, but it does the next generation and the next generation. So thank you for that. You summed up what our movement is all about, um, becoming aware, not just for ourselves, for ourselves and and, and implementing self-care plans, self-care strategies, but also for the next generation and for the people that are, that are living, you know, living in the, in the state of trauma right now. So thank you for that. Was there anything that you wanted to add as far as, you know, I want to hear a little bit about your company and what you do. So my company is interesting. The name Growing Good actually came from this idea that I have about how do we create generational good, right? Um, our, our company only works with nonprofits and for-profit companies that benefit the social good. So we really look at products and services that are of a benefit to society, whether that's in education, in scientific research, in civic engagement, in equity. I mean, all of these different spheres we've worked in. 
Um, and it comes from a foundational belief of the founders that we have to try to make the world a little bit better than we left it, right? I'm a firm believer in this idea, which I call um, pragmatic optimism, which is if you don't believe it can be better and the world can be better, then there's no hope, right? There's no possibility. There's no. So you have to fundamentally believe that it's possible that it can be better. And then couple that with pragmatism, which means understanding that it's not just magically going to get better, right? That it it doesn't, just because you believe it's going to get better, you have to do a lot of hard work and understanding what that hard work takes to make it better. And so we believe in that fundamentally. And then we basically believe that we have to kind of plant these seeds of good to grow so that, and whether it's in organizations to be more sustainable and scalable, and it may not be directly when I'm involved, it may be later, or I may never see it, but I've got to do it for my kids. I've got to do it for the future generations, right? Like we have to get out of ourselves that we need to receive all the benefits of the stuff that we do. And sometimes you have to actually grow good that you may never see. And so that's kind of our belief is like, how do we actually help people and organizations that are doing meaningfully good work to really expand and amplify their impact and make it make their work sustainable so that they can help organizations and individuals and people for generations. And it may not have anything to do with what I directly see, but if I'm actually planting those seeds and hopefully the world will be better for my kids and their kids and the generations after. Right, right. And that's, I think, why your message resonated so well with me when I heard when I first heard you on a podcast. Right. And I love that you're out doing these podcasts because even the seeds that you're planting, it helps other people to understand that the that there are other organizations and people out here that are doing good work. So I applaud you for that. And I thank you for that. Um, Oh, thank you very much. That's very kind. I mean, I think I started doing the podcast really so that I, you know, it it came from my own personal experience of coming from academia and feeling like the work that I was doing was important, but, you know, it was like 20 people would read something I would write or, you know, I would go to a a big education conference and you'd have a room of people, but that would be it. Right. And so I wanted to be able to talk about how can I help organizations, not just one on one where I'm doing like the in-depth work and the consulting and working with them on a day to day basis. But are there ways that I can help organizations that I may not be doing work with daily? Right. And I thought that the podcast would be a great educational tool to be able to give a wider audience ideas on how they can actually improve their work um, and things like how do they help get their funding or help organize their operations to be able to be more sustainable with not necessarily having to engage, you know, on a one-on-one basis. It was more of an amplification tool. So it's been kind of fun to do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I see that when I look at our numbers and see how we're spreading with the Get Trauma-Informed movement, and mm-hmm. I see that people all over the world are being touched by the message. And when I look at the, you know, we talked a little bit about uh, the Pathway to Trauma Recovery. I'm going to pull that up too. The Pathway to Trauma Recovery, our book that released. And the message is resonating with so many people because it's not just it's not just my voice, my experience, but it's different types of trauma that people are resonating with. And when you see that one person, you know, use tools to overcome, you, then it, you can hear the message a little bit better. And it's not like someone, it's a peer-to-peer sort of, you know, giving you the right tools that you need to overcome your trauma. A little bit before when you and I talked, you talked about pushing beyond trauma with internal motivation, right? And Mm -hmm. can you explain a little bit more about what, what you meant by that? Stay with us. We'll be right back. 
Imagine driving down the road, enjoying a beautiful day when suddenly a tree jumps out in front of your car. Crash! In an instant, your life is flipped upside down, both physically and psychologically. That was my reality. I'm Liz Blanding, a certified holistic wellness and trauma recovery coach. In a time when, according to the National Center for PTSD, the epidemic of trauma is on the rise, 70% of adults in the U.S. have experienced some type of traumatic event at least once in their lives. That's 223.4 million people who could benefit from support on their journey to recovery. To address this, I launched the Get Trauma Informed podcast in March 2024. Our podcast offers free information, resources, expert advice, and stories of those who have overcome trauma and shifted from surviving to thriving. The podcast has the capacity to reach hundreds of thousands of people. I believe that by partnering with the Get Trauma Informed podcast, we can provide critical support to many more people who need it. Trauma was not their fault, but recovery is their responsibility. And with your support, we can help them to achieve it. Thank you for considering the partnership opportunity. I look forward to the possibility of working together to make a significant impact on trauma recovery. Email us at info at oasiswellnesscts.com or contact us at 616-320-0703. Now we will return to our Get Trauma Informed conversation. Well, I mean, I think that here's the thing. When you're in it, it's very hard to have perspective, right? Um, or if you know no different, it's hard to have perspective. So if if you're in a situation, whether it's abuse or a toxic environment, it's very hard to break that cycle because one, you have to realize that there is a possibility of difference and two, that you deserve it. Right. Because so many times like we don't believe that it's possible to have anything different. And then or even if it is possible, self-esteem because of trauma, because of toxicity, you become so it weathers you so much and it strips you of your dignity. It strips you of your um, self-efficacy. It strips you of so much not just from the physical, right? And so also recognizing that you believe that you as a person deserve better too, yeah. right? I mean, I think those two things, you've got to believe that it's possible and you also have to believe that it's that you deserve and it's possible for you. And when I talk about internal motivation, it's not just like bootstrap it, you know, like, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. It's more of understanding and getting to a point where you fully believe that you deserve to be respected as a person. You deserve to be loved as a person. And part of it is also getting to the point where you can love yourself enough to say like, I don't deserve this. No matter what the external situation is telling me, or what other people are telling me, I believe that I don't deserve this. And because of that, I want to change this. And that requires a lot of internal motivation, but also internal fortitude to be able to say that, no, this is not okay. Or to start creating those boundaries when there may not have they may not have existed for a multitude of reasons, right? And so that takes a lot of internal capacity. And I think we don't build that resilience enough in our society amongst individuals, but also like in our kids, right? Like we, we, we don't give people enough credit that they can help themselves solve their problems too. And I, and I'm not saying that help outside isn't important. I think external help is, can be extremely useful, can be extremely um, beneficial, but I think 
all the therapy in the world, all the support groups in the world, all the loving words in the world, if the individual doesn't believe them or accept them or believe that they're worthy enough for that, it's not going to go anywhere. And, and right. I thank you. Yeah, yeah. I thank you for that because you summed up what our programs are all about. That's what our eight week programs do. They give you the ability to put a self care plan in place, because even from like going from my own experience of trauma, you you said it. You don't because of the tapes that you've been the negative tapes that you've been fed through either abusive relationships or, you know, just from trauma reworking your brain. Sometimes you can't see that you deserve better or that you deserve it. And so in the programs, we go week by week to help us to rewire our brain, to rewire our thinking, to give us that capacity to now build the the uh, resiliency, right, to now build that. And in order to do that, sometimes you, you kind of got to rewire and kind of erase some of the the negative tapes that have been that you've been uh, told or that stuck with you um, and and to move forward. So sometimes it takes that um, clearing the slate, giving yourself a fresh start and then being able to launch into now I do deserve better. I do deserve more and that this is a possibility for me. So thank you for summing that up for us. Yeah. And it's it's interesting because we talk about tapes and that's such a older thing, right? Like, yes. Like our kids would be like a tape. What's a tape? What's a cassette tape, right? So I always tell like the kids, it's like a playlist. You've been playing the same playlist over and over and over again. And now it doesn't fit who you are anymore. So how do you turn the volume down and kind of move out of that playlist into another thing that, that may actually be better that you don't know yet. Right. And so I think it's building that idea of possibility, but also enough self-love and self-care to really be able to accept it. That it's that I don't care who you are. Everybody deserves to be respected and loved for who they are. And as a person, right? Like not beyond like anything grandiose, like romantic love. It's more of like, you just love, you just deserve to be loved and cared for and respected because you're a person and fundamentally. And so until we create a society that believes that all people have value we're still going to have these issues of trauma because we're going to disenfranchise people or we're going to think other people are better because they have status or they have wealth or they have education or they have whatever it is that they have. Um, And that's always going to breed inequity, right? So I think until we can see people as having inherent worth and having people believe that, then these things are still going to happen. And so we have to get away from the idea that you you create worth by getting achievements. You We have to get to the point where you have worth because you are here. That's so good. I, could, I couldn't help. <laughs> I tried to hold it, but that is so, so good. That is so good. And so many people need to hear that message and and hearing it from your voice. um, You have a soothing voice. And oftentimes when when something is coming at you in a harsh manner, you can't hear it, even if it's truth. So that's one of the things that I love about podcasting, because you get a variety and you get people like yourself that have that voice that somebody can hear. It's like a, a, a gentle touch on their shoulder that says, you know what, you have worth because you are here, you know, that's amazing. Well, and I think um, I am of the belief that you get more flies with honey than vinegar, right? And I think that, believe me, I can have that moment where I'm like, I'm going to like, you know, I'm going to give you that little push to get out that door. But I think in general, When people are in a vulnerable state, it doesn't help to say, well, you did this wrong and you did that wrong. And it's it's like they're already their worst critic. I think at this point, it's about showing compassion and humanity and love and care. And I think that 
when people haven't seen that. They can also be suspicious too, where they're like, well, why is this person being nice to me? It's like, well, I think, but I think if you slowly continue to engage and say like, look, it's, I don't, I'm not coming with any sort of preconceived notion. I don't have any expectations. I just think that we need to be nice to people. Like, <laughs> I mean, I, think that that's, I think that's not a, I know that might be radical for some people, but I think that um, we would be much better off in society if we were more civil to each other. Right. Right. But think about how that message resonates with somebody that that only have known criticism, that have only known the other side of things and didn't even know that, you know, your point of view or your perspective even exists because of all the harsh criticism or because of what even if they grew up in a home that was all critical, you know, that everything was just, you know, not in this manner. Now, so, so of course they're going to come. So oftentimes trauma does breed with it trust issues. So they're going to come when this is unfamiliar weight. This, this is a pattern that I need to break because this is this is actually available to me. So I think that's that's an amazing message. Well, and I think it's choosing, right? I mean, we've talked about, like I've had a pretty difficult, traumatic life in terms of experiences, you know, criticism, having very low self-esteem and self-worth and feeling like never good enough, right? And part of it was, having to work really hard in my own mind to be that kind of type A personality and get all of those awards and accolades because I felt like there wasn't enough internal worth that I needed to kind of have external validation. Yes. Any sort of worth. But I think what I learned through that experience and reflecting and also through a lot of, you know, therapy and support was I get to choose. Like I, just because I didn't have the best situation, whether it was having people who are super critical, being in an abusive relationship, all of those things. Yes. Those things completely shape a lot of my perspective but they don't necessarily have to be who I am only. And I get to choose how I want to treat people in the world. And so I choose to be kind. I choose to be compassionate. I choose to care about what other people, what's happening with other people and to think about that because I don't want to perpetuate what my own experiences and negative experiences have been. And I think that that's where getting various, getting people who are in those situations that they do have the power to choose. Like you can continually be a victim of your circumstance, or you can say, you know what, what happened was awful. It was terrible. I didn't deserve it, but I don't want to live like this. And I don't want to do this to other people. And so I'm not going to. And that's all it kind of takes, right? I mean, I know it sounds like easy and trite, but it's true. Like that's the building block. And then you got to do the hard work. But until you get to that point, you know, we we can't have those situations. And And we have, you can't have anything better. And I think that when people can't recognize that, you don't, you don't always get to, you don't get to choose the cards you get dealt, right? In life, whether that's poverty, whether that's people who are in abusive families or whatever it is that are your circumstances, you don't necessarily choose. You can't choose, but you can choose how you deal with it. Absolutely. And you said something very important here. I don't want to lose that thought. You said doing the work and, and oftentimes people don't understand that there are there are programs and there are services available and oftentimes we're taught that 
well, in certain in certain ethnic groups that you keep your stuff to yourself and you don't go to therapy or you don't talk about it. And we're here to do that paradigm shift to say, no, doing your work is going to get you a better outcome, a different outcome and give you the opportunity to be able to live your life full out, to walk in your purpose, to have passion about what you do, that you have the right to do that. And you said that right about choices and being able to choose. You have the right to to have a fantastic experience and again, to walk in your purpose. And in order to find that, sometimes we have to peel off those layers that we that we see as true, like trauma sort of like, it's, I say it's like looking through a kaleidoscope where the where the picture is is blurred, it's, it's different, you know? But um, so, so yeah, thank you for those points. And, and we're reaching so many people that did not even know that help beyond like just therapy, help beyond medications. We've talked to people that, you know, that have come from the war and they thought the only thing that they could do was take medications where we talk about there's a plethora of, of, of different ways to be able to get involved in whatever care, get involved with it so that you can, you know, start doing the things that's going to help you feel better, look better, think better, come from a different perspective, well, like what you were talking about. Well, and I think that we have to get away from the belief that there's a one size fits all for everybody. Yes. I think that there's space for everything. Um, you know, for some people, therapy doesn't work because they're just not ready for it, right? Like you have to be open enough to want to delve into really painful things and talk about them and explore them. And that takes time. It's not something that just tends to happen, right? Like we don't, we don't necessarily especially people who have been in traumatic experiences, they don't necessarily want to be judged or yes. to share what has happened because sometimes the things are so awful and hideous that it feels like there's a shame to that or there's, um, what if this person thinks I deserved it? Or what if this person, well, why did you tolerate this? I mean, all of these things, right? Like the, the people have crazy amounts of negative messaging that are going through their brains. Absolutely. And then you build in potential neurological like um, you know, predispositions, whether it's different types of mental illness, different types of hereditary issues. There could be a lot of other things that also impact like how yes. people are processing. So I think, you know, we we tend to say, well, if you have this experience, you need to do A, B, C, D, E, and then you'll be fine. But that seldomly works for everybody, right? Absolutely, and, yes. And I think the other thing that we don't teach enough about, and I think throughout, whether you have trauma or not, is that progress is not linear, mm -hmm. right? That everybody expects, well, it's supposed to just get better. And it's like, yes. And sometimes it goes backwards and sometimes it goes sideways. And sometimes... It feels like it's going around in a circle yes. and you have to realize that it takes time and it's not linear. And while you're going to have good days and you're going to have bad days and hopefully what ends up happening is over time, the good outweighs the bad, but the bad is still going to exist. Right. And I, and I don't think that we have those truthful conversations with people. We, we have this belief that, you know, trajectory is pro progress is always like this kind of straight shot up and it, it just never is whether it's in life or in research or what in any project you're doing there's always going to be hiccups there's always going to be but also having that grit and I think that internal motivation that even setbacks are just that they're just not now Right. And yes. that's that's what you have to cut. Kind of, it's almost having faith that it's going to get better, but it's going to be hard. And I think understanding that it's both and that's OK. Absolutely. That's so good. That's so good. And when you said that about faith, it's like, you know, um, how do you how do you how do you have faith? You know, it's, but it's like it's like taking in air. Right. We know that the air is there. We know that we're that we that, you know, it just it happens automatically. And so having faith often sometimes, you know, for me, it's like just, just being able to lean, lay back, 
you know, being able to like if you're standing on top of a a building, I'm not a building, but on a mountain and being able to fall back and knowing that you're good, that you're going to be caught. So that's well, awesome. And I think also, you know, we having perspective, right? What feels like you're not going to get through today if you look at an issue you know five years ago 10 years ago you probably felt like at some point that there was something that was going to happen that you weren't going to get through right right but you did because you're still here so kind of also leaning back that sometimes even though things feel like it's not going to get better it's not going to having perspective that you've lived through many difficult things and you've come out on the other side. And I'm not saying that what's happening now isn't really, really hard, whatever it is that people are struggling with or feels overwhelming and hard. We all get those feelings, but sometimes it's just, it's not about getting to two years from now. Sometimes it's about just like, it's like, I talk about it when people have new mom, their new moms, right? And sometimes it's just about surviving the day. Yes. <laughs> like it's just about getting to bedtime, right? Yes. Like, and sometimes on worst days, it's not even about surviving, the, it's just about surviving the hour. Like yes. sometimes it's just about surviving the minute. And so I think it's setting yourself up that even if, it's all about perspective. Sometimes when it feels so overwhelming, I tell my kids, it's like, take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. Let's just get through this minute. Yes. Yeah. And once we get through this minute, then we can reset and we can start over. Right. And if, if you need to do that with your brain and your own tricks of like, okay, I'm not going to think about what's going to happen six months from now, because I feel like I'm drowning now then you just need to be like, okay, well, am I drowning? Am I able to breathe? Am I, I was like, I was on, I'm like, I tell my kids all the time, breathe. And when they're really upset, you know, you kind of hyperventilate and, and they're always saying like, oh, I can't breathe. And I was like, okay, if you can't breathe, you're going to die. So like, if you don't breathe, you die. So let's just breathe. Don't focus on anything else. Just breathe. Yes. Yes. <laughs> It's my daughter with twins. She says that at the end of the day, she'll say she has five children and at the end and, and her babies are twins. And she'll say, everybody's tucked in the bed. Everybody's breathing. I'm OK. That's how she is in some days, because some days. Yeah, some days yes. Yeah, be grateful that everybody's breathing. Everybody's OK. So, well, you can't you know, you can't be like a superstar, like 24 seven. Right. We all right. have days where we're just like you know, sometimes you're kicking butt and sometimes your butt is getting kicked. Like, <laughs> no, no, no. Right. <laughs> right? <laughs> Recognizing that and saying, you know what? Okay. Today it's just getting through and getting everybody fed and a shower is a win. And I'm yes. going to take that win and I'm just going to keep going. Gonna right? Take that win and keep going. Absolutely. Absolutely. So so I think we don't, we don't acknowledge and celebrate the small wins enough. Like we, I think as people, we want to have like the big, I mean, of course, like getting some big award or some big promotion or some big thing, but if we're able to have gratitude and celebrate the small things, like they build on each other, right? Like they give you grace, they give you hope they give you they feed that energy inside of you right you need to feed your soul and so I think acknowledging that you know it's not every day you're not gonna you're not going to get some massive award every single day you may yes. never get a massive award but you made it through a really difficult thing or you made it through the day when you thought you were running on fumes like that's deserves a little bit of a pat on the back and a celebration. Absolutely, it does. It does. I'm going to ask you a question too here. How has trauma empowered and inspired you? Stay with us. We'll be right back. 
Today's episode is sponsored by Oasis Wellness Centers, home of Soothing Salve, an organic pain relief salve infused with over 30 natural herbs. It fights inflammation, provides pain relief, relieves stiffness, relieves dry and itchy skin, and it also improves circulation. Oasis Wellness Center's mission is dedicated to relieving pain, promoting relaxation, and restoring mobility. In order to grab your jar today, contact us at www.oasiswellnessctrs.com. Now we return to our Get Trauma-Informed Conversation. Well, I think what it's done is it's given me perspective and it's given me the ability to be compassionate more than I think I would have been Mm. because, and it also has given me the power of choice, Mm. right? That I don't have to choose to be in a place that I don't want to be. And I get to choose how I want to live my life. And that may not always coincide with what other people are telling me, but that's okay. So I think it's really allowed me to develop my own sense of self and choosing. Um, But I think I wouldn't actually trade all of the difficulties I've had because I think they've made me who I am in a lot of ways. Like I am a much more loving, compassionate, understanding person because of what's happened. And I think that, you know, I tell people I wasn't really like, I was forged, (laughs) very (laughs) difficult steel. Like, you know, it's like, the the pain was burned out, right? The yeah. the trauma was, but I think in a way it created a much more, interestingly enough, a much more loving person. I mean, I could be very bitter. Like a lot of the mm. things that happened to me have been, and I was, and I think that that was part of the process. Like I needed to be angry. I needed to be bitter, but then I needed to also realize I could continue to be that way and be miserable, or I could choose a different way. And I chose a different way because I didn't want to be an angry, bitter person who was miserable to be around and who was making other people's lives difficult. To, right. So like, I, so I'd rather choose to, you know, I forgave the people who hurt me, not for them, but for me. Yes powerful. Right. And I think that that's what people forget that forgiveness doesn't have to be for the other person. Forgiveness can be for yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. We can even go into the toxicity that happens on the inside. If you're not, if you don't forgive and you hold all of that resentment and hate and fear and bitterness on the inside, it it destroys you physically. So, so definitely, yes. Thank you for that. What and I you, the, oh, oh, the one the one last thing I think that mm-hmm. the trauma has given me is I think it's made me more courageous and brave than I ever would have been. Wow. Yeah. Because I think what it's done is the pain of abuse, the pain of violence, the pain of all of those things made me realize I can live through almost anything. Ooh. Resiliency, yes. It does. So I'm not that afraid of most things. Oh, that's right. Good. I've never and heard I, that perspective before. That's really good. Because it's like once you've walked through hell, yeah, you know, you kind of feel like, oh, most things, this isn't that bad. That's a a national park right there. (laughs) Some stories for you, right? It gives you a a different threshold. So I think it's made me 
way more brave and courageous when it came to things like starting my own business where people are like, oh, I can't do that. Or like going out and talking in front of people. It's like, you know, like I've had way worse things happen to me. The worst that could happen is somebody's going to laugh at me or they're just going to be like, oh, she didn't know what she's talking about. It's like, but okay, it's that painful, you know, whatever. Not really. So I think like all of those things. And I think that's where I've tried to make the trauma actually something that what I've learned from the trauma, Mm -hmm. a blessing and a gift. Right. Like, and that was part of my forgiveness journey was like, how do you make those things that are so painful something that actually can be of benefit and of service? Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 And that goes right into um, what, what would you say to someone facing trauma? Well, I think when you're in it, it's really hard to see anything else. And so what I would say to that person is, I know you don't believe it. I know that you don't know me from Adam, but I think know that you deserve better. And there are people who you may not even know yet, who will be there to support and help you. But you first have to believe that it can be better and believe that you deserve better. And then from there, you can figure it out. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. Well, is there anything, I mean, this has been an amazing conversation. It's actually relaxed me and this is a wonderful way to kick off the week low stress is a wonderful <laughs> way. So thank you for that. And is there anything that you would like to leave our, our listening audience with today? I think just be a little bit more kind to each other. I think we've we've lost civility, I think. And I think part of it is, you know, our politics and our society is very polarized. But at the end of the day, the person that you disagree with is still a person, right? And I think that we've lost this idea of nuance. We've become so much about being right that we can't even listen to anyone who has an opinion that might be different. Mm-hmm. And that's really problematic because the only way you learn if is by incorporating new information and new knowledge and being open. And if you are so, and you may be right, right? That's the thing, like you may be right, but it's not your job to make everybody in the world agree with you. Mm. And I think it's your job to, I'm very much about, I like to provide Maybe it's that, you know, that gentle touch that you said. I think it's more meaningful to actually be persuasive and kind mm-hmm. by, I am way more able to get people on the same bus by just listening to them. Because I don't, because I think fundamentally we're all people and in general, we all want the same thing. We want things to be better, we, whatever that means to the individual, Right. You want things, you want to not be in a state of discomfort. <laughs> I, think, I mean, yeah. I think that that's the reality, right? And I think listening to why people have the opinions that they do or is really important because a lot of it is fear-based or sometimes it's like incorrect or whatever it is. But if you don't understand why people are reacting the way that they're reacting, there's no way to really resolve it. And just raising your voice isn't going to, you know, it, it, it it's like, people are like, I, I, the person's not listening to me. So I'm just going to yell. And it's like, well, that's really not going to make them listen to you. Maybe we need to go from it from a different angle. Like let's, you know, listen to what they're saying. And also realize that people aren't you. 
So they're not going to always react in the way that you would. They seldomly do. Yes. Most people act in ways that have nothing to do with you. Like, I think we have this crisis of taking everything super personally. Yes. And I'm like, I, peace of mind is really important. So like, you have to let people go. People are going to be angry. Like they can be angry, but it's like, it's don't let that anger encroach on your sense of peace. Yes. That's another tool. That's another tool. That's a, that's a tool to put in our tool case, in toolbox to help us to move forward in all of this. And what kept resonating with my spirit is, is growing good by being kind. I just kept dropping down in my spirit, be kind to others. And I love that message. Well, I don't, I don't think we need to be nasty or snarky or anything like that. Like it's like to what end at some point, right? Like at some point it's like, you know, look, I'd rather be the kind one than the right one all the time. That's good. That's a good place for us to end. The kind mm-hmm. one versus the right one. I thank you so much for your for giving up your valuable time today, your expertise, your experience. And I promise you that if it only touches one person, we've done our job today. So I appreciate Absolutely. you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It was lovely talking with you. And I'm so um I'm so honored that you asked me to be on your show. Thank you again. And thank you all for listening. We will see you on the next episode. Bye for now. It's time to buckle up. No more suffering in silence. Our power pack journey to recovery and realignment starts now. Remember, you were collateral damage on someone else's warpath. Trauma is not your fault. Recovery, however, is your responsibility. I'm your host, wellness coach Liz Blanding, and this is the Get Trauma Informed Podcast.